Please rise. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God that I've chosen to share with you this fourth Sunday of Easter is taken from the gospel reading that Pastor Coleman just shared with you from John chapter 10. I'll read to you just verse 11. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. This is the word of God before us. Please be seated. Well, just before John chapter 10, in chapter 9, something remarkable took place, something also very controversial that Jesus did. He used saliva in his mouth to make some mud from the ground, from the dirt, and he put it on this man's eyes who was born blind. And he told him to go wash in a pool, and he came home seeing. But Jesus, in doing this, although it was spectacular, it was also divisive, especially for a group of religious leaders of the day known as the Pharisees. They were very big on obeying the law. And so one group of them was so divided, they said only a person sent from God could do such a spectacular thing. While another group said, this Jesus did a work on a Sabbath, therefore he is a sinner. So after interrogating this once blind beggar over and over, and even after interrogating his parents who, out of fear of being cast out, did not side with him, eventually this man was cast out. He was taken out of the synagogue. He was a social outcast. But Jesus seeks out this man. And we find very clearly that this man believes in Jesus. He says, Lord, I believe. And he worships Jesus. Next, Jesus says some very controversial words. He says, for judgment I came into this world that those who do not see may see. And those who see may become blind. You see, these Pharisees hear Jesus' words, and they follow up with their own question. They say, are we also blind? Jesus answers, if you were blind, you would have no guilt. But now that you say, we see, your guilt remains. So Jesus confronts these spiritually blind Pharisees through his words and his actions. You see, the spiritually blind refuse to acknowledge their need for a Savior in spite of what God's Word says. And only when we realize our, we are blind or condemned by the law as sinners do we see. We find this happening in our world today, don't we? A sin is quickly dismissed or justified. It's written off as not being really a sin. It's not so bad. Pretty soon, everything is tolerated, and people begin to twist and ignore God's Word, making themselves to be their own gods. But Jesus continues to speak to these Pharisees and others who were listening to His teaching. He uses a figure of speech, something that he would also do with his parables. But as with the parables, the meaning would not always be obvious. Now, if you're like me, I don't necessarily know exactly what it's like to deal with wandering sheep, but I can imagine what it's like. Recently, my wife and I enrolled our child in T-ball. We wanted to have him learn the basics of the sport of baseball. So we thought, what a great way for him to make friends and to learn the skills of the sport. But we found out very quickly that this sport is not exactly a spectator's one. It involved cooperation from every single dad out on this field. Practices were about 30 minutes before the game, and the innings usually would last only about two or three, depending on the attention span of the players. So I found myself standing behind my son, guiding him as other dads were doing with their children the entire time, functioning as his coach, even though they had a volunteer coach. As you can imagine, this required a tremendous amount of patience. I've seen everything from playing with dirt 
to the entire team chasing after the ball after they hit it, along with playing with grass and wildlife, watching other games happening in a field nearby, staring at the clouds, all the while other dads are saying the same thing that I'm saying to my son, go get the ball, you can do it, throw it to first base, good job, keep it up. However, I noticed something else in the midst of playing my son's coach with all of these wandering sheep around me. Each child was only listening to the very unique sound of their own dad's voice. It didn't matter what the coach was saying. It was all about what their dad was saying. Jesus talks about his very intimate relationship with his wandering sheep. He begins by saying this, "'Truly, truly, I say to you, He who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door, he is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they're not going to follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Now, Jesus uses some interesting sheep talk here to try to explain what he means. In this day and age, the Pharisees and other listeners would have known what Jesus was talking about as he talked about shepherd and his relationship to his sheep. You see, in that day and age, sheep were kept in a walled enclosure, and this was to keep them safe, especially at night. Only the shepherd would have access to through the gate to keep those sheep safe. Anyone finding another way in would be considered up to no good, a robber, a thief. But these listeners still don't get it. They don't understand Jesus' words. They are blind. So Jesus then starts with another truly, truly statement. He says, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door, Jesus says. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and to kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it to the fullest, to have it abundantly. What Jesus is explaining here is that many strangers, many false teachers and false Christs came before Jesus, but they did not find Jesus in His Word. They did not point Him out to others as the way of salvation, but God's sheep would not listen to those thieves and robbers. Anyone who comes through the gate, though, that is, believers in Jesus, those will be saved. He is the light, the truth, and the way. But what this means for you and me as God's sheep, as though we wander, though we are sinful, we have the good shepherd Jesus, the one who is our salvation, and Jesus separates himself from the other shepherds of that day and age, and of any shepherd for that matter. He says, I am the good shepherd The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. What kind of a shepherd would do such a thing? Sure, a shepherd or a hired hand would take care of the sheep, would make sure they got water and food, and would keep them safe. But what kind of a shepherd would die for his sheep? This good shepherd, Jesus, is extraordinary. Jesus, out of his great love for you and for me, went all the way to the cross and willingly suffered and died, laying down his life for you and for me. That's the kind of good shepherd that we have. He calls you and me by name, and he made us his. He leads us as we hear his voice, and we follow him in his word through faith. Now, after hearing Jesus' words, the Jews were again divided. 
Some of them thought, well, Jesus, he had to have been crazy. This man is a lunatic. What is he saying? And while others said he had to have a demon inside of him, how else could he have done these things? Still, some do believe in Jesus. Yet Jesus again repeats himself as he says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. So as God's sheep, let us take comfort in knowing that Jesus laid down his life for you that He calls you and me by name, that He has made you His child, and that we have eternal life in Him. May God bless you with these comforting words from our Good Shepherd Jesus. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all of our understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please rise.